Hi guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to start a little um, series for beginners who are just getting into junk journals and some easy little tricks and tips to get started. One of the um, easiest ways to start a junk journal is by using um, a book that you already own. It can be an old book, it can be a new book, whatever you would like. This one um, I have had for a long, long time. I think I got it at Goodwill for a quarter. It's a great little size. And so I thought maybe we could use this one to um, make a little junk journal out of. So um, what you want to do is you want to open up your book and you will see that the signature block is separated from the back of the spine by a space that goes all the way through. You want to cut the signature block away from your cover. You have to be very careful because while using a craft knife, I mean, you don't want to cut yourself, but if you cut too deeply, then you'll cut through the back of the cover to it. And we would like to avoid that at all costs. So what I am going to do is just gently make a few little shallow cuts. And as you can see, there is like some webbing in there that we need to cut. It's book binding cloth is what it is. And, and we need to cut through that. And that will release the signature block from the cover. And you just slide your knife along this edge, but it's you'll, you'll do less damage to the book if you stand it up on end and work your knife down this way. It, it pulls that signature block away from the cover and you have less of a chance of cutting through the back of that spine. So just carefully make shallow cuts um, along this crease. All right, so there is our first cut, just like that. And then we do the same thing back here. It's a little bit easier because we can fold this back like this. And then you can um, cut through it fairly easily. You can even kind of pull on it. Let's see, sometimes it just kind of does that. <laughs> just kind of does that, guys. Okay, clean up my mess. And um, there, if, if this backing is here, just, just slice along the edge and get rid of it. Um, it's just extra bulk that you don't, you don't need it. Okay, so now what I like to do is I like to reinforce the inside um, just so that you'll get some more um, longevity out of it. And although this book is not um, old, it's still, um, I think it's, it's important to, um, you know, kind of help the inside a little bit. Now, this one has some cool um, inside papers, you know, on the inside, the, the liner is kind of pretty, it's got a map, and so, <coughs> excuse me, there are two different things you can do. Well, there's lots of different things you can do. One of the things you can do is just add reinforcement across the back of the spine and then out a little bit. And then that way you can keep this if you want it. Um, if you don't care, then you measure the height of this paper. You can see the blue edging around it. So measure the height of the paper and the width, including the spine when everything is flattened out. And you can either cut a piece of paper this size or you can cut a piece of fabric. Um, the fabric will probably last you longer. It, it, doesn't give in to fatigue like paper does. So at this point, we have a decision to make. Masking tape, see how this masking tape almost kind of blends in. So masking tape is actually pretty decently strong. Let me measure real quickly. So seven and an eighth. So you can pop this puppy down here like such and measure it out and I'm just gonna cut that and then at seven and an eighth I'm gonna make a little a little tick mark right there and then you can make a slice so this is a super easy way to do it.
Oh, masking tape. Why does thee vex me so? So kind of fold it in half, like curl it lengthways. Come on camera. So kind of curl it. And because you want it to stick inside the spine first, line it up with the edge of, um, as best as you can, so that it lines up with the edge of the liner paper. And then run your fingernails in there along the edge of where the cover meets the spine. You want that nice and, uh, and secured down so you can see how it's kind of curved. So I use that to um, run my fingers in there and then just fold it over the edge, just like that. You can use a bone folder if you would like or the edge of a non-existent fingernail. And just like that. So there's one way. Uh, the next way, put that aside, is if you wanted to take some fabric, and we know that this is seven and an eighth high, and the width is uh, nine and five eighths. But I'm gonna add a little tiny bit because these kinda have a little bit of a step down. So, okay, so let's um, square up one of the edges. It's always a great idea to start with a squared edge. And this is a squared edge over here, so if you wanna line, line that up with one of the lines on your grid, and then just come over here and line up your ruler. And then you'll have two, where's my, oh. This cutter and I, we are not friends. We are not friends. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut this at nine and three quarter. And three quarter is gonna be a reta approximately. So there is our length, and it was seven and an eighth high, right? So I'm gonna line this up on one of the inch marks. Here, I'll do it up here, sorry. And then we're gonna go to right here, about. Math was never my strong suit. My grandfather knew this and he loved me anyway. He was an engineer and like smarter than the average bear. And so he would attempt to teach um, me, help me with my homework. And, um, but it's like he always ended up using, you know, calculus to teach me algebra. And I'm sitting there going, uh, oh, and he tried, he was so patient so patient. I did pass by the skin of my teeth and the hair of my chinny chin chin. Okay, so a little bit of Mod Podge. Sorry, Mod Podge. <laughs> I'm just, just doing it right along here. And I'm going to line up, kind of center it in the middle, in the middle, so that we can Push that down just like this. And work your, you know, work a fingernail in there around the edge because that spine is not flat, flat. Oh, I'm on camera. So the spine is not flat. Do you see how it's kind of curved? So we want to kind of run that, um, run that fabric kind of down into those little recesses right there. Okay, and now we have a chance to check our measurement and it looks like it's gonna be just an, a pinchy pinch too long over here and so you can either fold this back and like I said, math is not my strong suit. Not my strong suit. You can trim the edge of this because it's just a pinch 
that needs to be taken off. Um, you can also do this with paper if you would like, which is a little easier to cut sometimes, um, unless you're a quilter. If you're a quilter, you've got this, you got this managed. You slay this part. Quilters are, like, I can't even imagine. I, some, of, some of the shapes that they cut, and then they cut, you know, a hundred of them, and they're perfect. I am always in awe at what quilters, how they cut fabric, and how it just ends up perfect every time. So I'm just running, again, a little bit of Mod Podge along. I don't care if it like goes over the edge a little bit. I, I don't care. Um, Mod Podge dries clear, so at this point, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I'm gonna lay this fabric down, and if you have to kind of tilt it a little bit to line it up on the edge of, sorry, that, where that paper is, there we go. This one's gonna be doubly enforced. And now let's do this side. As I slop Mod Podge all over. A nice even coat to hold down the fabric. This is a, talking about um, Scotland. I wanna go someday. So those of you in Scotland, you have been warned. <laughs> it's on my bucket list, the, all the British Isles. It is um, something that I've always wanted to do. That is like, that's the first on my list of places to go because that's where, you know, that's where my blood is from. That's where my family is, is from, is from the British Isles. I took one of those, I mean, I knew where I was from, but I took one of those DNA tests just to see if it, you know, matches up with, you know, what, the, what, you, what you hear coming down the pike, you know, you always get like family, you know, well, you're great grandpappy, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but no, we were pretty, pretty much on the money. <laughs> and um, I am 66% um, British Isles. So whether it's Ireland, England, or Scotland, 66% of my DNA comes from there. And then I have like 15% that is um, like Norway, uh, Finland, that Nordic area, and then 10% that is, um, or a little better, that is like uh, Portugal, Spain area. But um, no, no American blood. I was um, a little disappointed on that. Um, our family, um, there are parts of our family that have been in America since 1632. Um, but, so we've been here a minute, you know, just a minute. And you would think we'd have some American, you know, some Native American blood in there. And we, I, I don't, at least I didn't pick it up. And so I was, I was a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. Okay. There I go off of my rabbit holes and my tangents. So here is our book and it is lined. And actually, like I said, this one we did tape too, which you don't have to do both. Um, I like the way the fabric looks. I also like the way if you use paper, because you can totally use paper, just make sure that it is fitted down into all the recesses, your curved spine, everything, so that you don't get any um, fatigue because your paper doesn't have to stretch when you open it, because that's the important thing. Okay, so we have basically got ourselves a journal cover. And in the next little segment that I will be doing very soon, we will take some just around the house types of things. In case you don't have a book to gut, we will make a simple cover out of some things that you probably already have in your house. Okay guys, thank you for stopping by and checking this out and playing with me today. And I will see you really soon in the next video. Bye guys.